What's up, Stogie Geeks listeners? Joe Zemper here, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood, a.k.a. The Italian Styling, telling you about a little giveaway that we have going on. We've teamed up with our sponsor, J.C. Newman, this year to give back to the Stogie Geeks listener. They've been such an awesome partner so far. They've decided to give away one Diamond Crown humidor per quarter to the winner that they choose. All you got to do is log on to stogiegeeks.com forward slash Diamond Crown. Click on the Enter to Win button. It's really that easy. So if you're smart and you want an awesome humidor for your home collection, go to our website, stogiegeeks.com. Find that banner ad right on top. Click on it and register to win that humidor. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, look who I found. I'm back. I'm back. I'm here on Stoic Geeks. <laughs> it's been a long time. I've been writing a lot of <laughs> software lately, and we just had uh, the guys publish a bunch of shows, and there wasn't any, like, grotesque errors and stuff. So I'm like, I don't know what to do with myself right now. I'm like, I might as well go on Stoic Geeks. Like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I've been coding for, like, <laughs> three months straight. Dude, that's been pretty much consuming me. So It's, it's been an awesome time here. We've been having some, some yes. good interviews and, and, and keeping the show going. So it's been super cool. And you know what else, too? Uh, and, Drew, it's nice to nice to meet you. Thanks for coming on Stoic Geeks. Uh, this is going to be Pleasure. a lot of fun. Uh, Drew, have you been to Casa Fuente before? I have not. In Las Vegas? So no, I have not. Joe had not either. And th- we went to Vegas, uh, as you probably described, uh, for our security work. And... We're, I don't know, we're sitting there in the suite. We we're doing the interviews, and I'm like, Joe, we're, go- we're going. We got like a block of time. I don't know how we like. Don't give us free time because that's it's bad in <laughs> Vegas, right? I'm like, Joe, we got this block of time. Everyone's. Like, I'm like, you and I are going to Casa Fuente, like, like right now. Like, let's get an Uber. Let's go. Like, we're going. I'm like, have you ever never been? He's like, No, dude, I've never been. I'm like, We're going. So Joe and I went to Casa Fuente, oh. and um. It sparked uh, a pretty big bill <laughs> that we racked up. <laughs> like I said, don't give us free time because that's, right? that's bad <laughs> for the budget anyhow. And uh, we smoked some great cigars, had their classic mojitos. Our listeners have probably heard us talk about Casa Fuente before. Uh, probably not in some time. So it's still there. It's still awesome. It's, and we visited a few different cigar. Well, we went to the Davidoff Lounge, which was yep. really nice as well. Yep. I don't know if we went to any other lounge. We didn't make it to the other one in Caesars. That's the name escapes me. One of the famous Monte Cristos. Yep. Uh, that's a really good one as well. I like that one. And and I have to say what we came down to was, and we went to the Tiki Bar, like Frankie's Tiki, where you can have cigars too. It, what we came down to is we like Casa Fuente the best. And I think out of all my cigar experience in Vegas, it, it, even in the country, in the world, it's one of my favorite places to visit. Just the... I don't know what it is about it, dude. Like the whole vibe, I guess, of the place, it, right? It really does have a super cool vibe. And, you know, if, 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 if you've never been, uh, definitely highly recommend you going down there. It's a place where, it, to me, it's like you kind of step back into time a little bit, right? The person that works at Humidor, they're, they're knowledgeable. Uh, they they tend to walk you through some of the process. You got to tell them the story of oh we found these in the back. Too. Oh I have oh okay. believe me okay. I'm all I'm right, all ready. Right. To, a, I have all kinds of notes on that cigar too. So it's amazing how the how the world works, right? And and then you know you go in and it's got the it's got like that Cuban flair music going on in the background. The bartender nice. n- the bartender on site knew his stuff. Took time with with the he with was the on cr- point. Yeah. They were even better than years past. Yeah. And, and it depends on the bartender. I think how good those mojitos are. But that whoever was working that day, we went. Uh, dude was on point. Yep. I found it fascinating when you walk into a cigar shop that we obviously frequent or you frequent once a year, right? Mm-hmm. And. There's a gentleman sitting in the corner. He's like, "Hi, Paul!" <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> really? Like, like you know? Well, uh, I've been going to the same conferences, you know, for like probably close to 20 years now. So, you go to nice. the same places, you frequent the same lounges, and there's like a small following that like basically follows the same, the same pattern. Yeah. So, uh, and they know their stuff because they're you know they're at Casa Fuente, and uh, many great meetings I've had in in security uh, at Casa Fuente, uh, including the most recent time with Joe. Now. I do want to, I guess we'll start with the cigar we smoked, right? Did you cover this one on the show at all? Not yet. Okay, good, because I have all the information that I could find uh, about it. Most of it comes from Half Wheel. 
has done uh, at least one article on it. Now, this cigar is called, and, and Joe, what did you think of this cigar? I, I, when I first lit it up, I was like, okay, I don't know if it's the music. I don't know if it's the decor of the place. But this cigar is phenomenal. They are better when you have them at Casa Fuente, which is yes. one of the few ways. Now, Drew, I don't know if you've ever had a Fuente Fuente Opus X Forbidden X cigar in the bottle. No. Very Never rare cigar. Uh, I, I want to say Mark Jr. had one, and he would always tell me how like amazing it is, and it came in this bottle of cognac and all this stuff. And at Casa Fuente they have that cigar there. It is, in fact, according to Half Wheel, uh, multiple posts, right? They've done a review on it. They've also done a review of the Casa Fuente uh, house brand cigar, and they mention in the description for Casa Fuente that some of the rare blends that they have there, one of which is the Forbidden X cigar in the bottle for $60 a cigar. Now, if you buy the cone, I don't know if the three hundred dollars. I believe that includes the cognac and the cigar is three hundred. Just wow. the cigar itself uh, at Casa Fuente is sixty or seventy-five. It may have gone up a little bit. Price it may have been seventy-five or something like that. Uh, I want to say, and it's usually the cigar that I smoke when I'm there, as you know, we're there once a year. So it's not like I'm going there every week and buying a seventy-five dollar cigar, right? Like it's a treat. Uh, right. So you buy, you know, you buy one. Um, or a couple to take home like I did uh, because where else are you going to get these cigars, dude? Like you can go seek out one of these bottles of cognac. Now, what's interesting about the Half Wheel review is they did not give the cognac a very good review at all. Uh, they said it tasted like motor oil, something. <laughs> wow. Hold on. I got the uh, description. Hold on. Where is it? Um, so Humidipac, uh, Vitola. It's in here somewhere. I'll find it. They, they said something uh, very... Oh, uh, no. Given the cigar came from a bottle of liquor, the price was 300 um, Yeah, he said something like really bad about the uh, cognac in it. Where is it? Speaking of the wrapper. Oh, uh, he shared the bottle when he went on the Drew Estate Safari. Uh, mm. The alcohol is absolutely horrendous, tasting like a combination of acetone and rubbing alcohol. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, if you're at Casa for one day, pick up one of the cigars because you don't have to buy the bottle of cognac with it, right? Right. So, the, I, by the end of the year, Joe and I will probably have a some kind of concoction that will marry well with that cigar. Right, That's Joe? Right. Yeah. yeah. It pairs well. I, I tell you what, it's a much lighter uh, hold on. I can tell you a little bit about the cigar because I had actually never researched it all that much. In regards to the, to, to the cigar, like I was, oh, I, I told Paul, I was like, it, 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 it it's mild, right? It's mild, but yeah. it's it's very tasty. It's not complex, but you get that rich, old yeah. school, and you can just tell that it's higher end tobacco. It's aged you know? in those uh, barrels that the cognac is in, so it picks up a lot more sweetness than your regular Opus X. Um, huh. It also, so uh, this is according to Andrew Welch of Gar Trader. Um, so the cigar in the bottle uh, is a separate entity from Fuente and Calvados, which is the cognac, came up with the idea and pitched it to Fuente. Um, oh, no, the cigar in the bottle company is separate from Fuente and Calvados. And they mm. came up with the idea, they pitched it to both Fuente and Calvados to get this made. Um, so the Forbidden X band uh, is a new band, and it's a moniker that applies to non-regular Opus X releases. Uh, it says it has a sun-grown Corojo wrapper, grown at Chateau de Fuente. Uh, the wrapper, and I didn't know this, this is really cool. The wrapper is from the same plant, but from the top pruning as the Ash Ashton ESGs. Mm -hmm. This is the exact same cigar as the black banded Forbidden X cigar that came in the 2005 Platinum DVD set. I think I had one of those. I had like the ashtray set. They did produce some of these special sets. One comes with an ashtray. One comes with the DVD. I think I've had either pieces or portions of those uh, in the past uh, laying around in cigar shops, right? Uh, it says one of these cigars is included in the Journey to Chateau de la Fuente, a 2005 gift set from Prometheus. There were 5,000 produced. Uh, the scars in the Prometheus gift set include an extra 2005 on the band. Now, the 
Grand Parmier, Palm, Palmier, Parmier XS Calvados is the bottle, uh, which is actually quite interesting. They go on to talk about how it was distilled and uh, uses you know, all these different kinds of ingredients and purified water and crushed to extract delicate. You can read it in the thing. This is the whole thing about the uh, the actual cognac. The bottle in the box is absolutely beautiful. If you see the, the pictures on Half Wheels Post, I mean, absolutely gorgeous. It's sealed with some kind of humidipack inside the bottle. Uh, it's six and three eighths by 49. They call it a Toro Extra. It first appeared in 2007. Um, there was about 5,000 uh, total of the bottles made, apparently. Uh, it's tough to say exactly how many of these cigars were released. And they released some special at Casa Fuente. I think originally for $60. Now I want to say they're $75. Um, and it's just delicious, delicious uh, cigar. Uh, it, it gets a good review uh, from Half Wheel, and he, he goes through it. Uh, he gives an 85 at the end of the day. Uh, it doesn't, yeah, the last third isn't, like, spectacular, uh, and they do tend to fall apart sometimes on you. The wrapper tends to fall apart a little bit is what he says in the review. I think we experienced some of that, too. Actually, no, ours didn't fall apart. We were probably two-thirds of the way, and you're like, it's kind of dying out. It does. And, it and dies then, out and at then the like, end. And then yeah. just, at, just at the end end, it kicked back up again, mm -hmm. and we actually says, oh, are you getting it back? And I was like, yeah, I'm starting to get it back. And we paired that with, it wasn't a traditional mo mojito. Tangerine mojito. So they muddle limes and tangerines <laughs> to make the mojito. It's my favorite mojito. I mean, I, I couldn't replicate that, dude. Yeah. Like, just, and they serve it in this big like wine glass. Yep. Without the stem is yep. how, is how mm -hmm. they serve it. Yep. Uh, it's, and it's just, it's a great, and I, I in, like if you're in Vegas, Stop there, get a couple of mojitos, get one of these cigars, splurge, you know, maybe go win some money on the slots and then go <laughs> go to Casa Fuente <laughs> and have one of these cigars. Uh, it's spectacular. Yeah. So I, I brought home two extra uh, to keep in my humidor. I may have one from like years past uh, left. So I may have like maybe three total uh, in there. You know, they're just special. Nice. Are you going to tell the story about the, the rap or what you first asked for? Or do you want to wait until we do some well, You guys can cover a couple of sticks, and then, you know, okay. then I'll tell. Uh, I have all kinds of information about that uh, as well. Okay, cool. Drew. Yes. Let's, uh, let's do one of your sticks. <clears throat> all right. We'll, we'll kick it off with the La Aurora uh, 107 Zeppelin 4x58. So Nomi gave me the cigar uh, on Monday, and he's like, hey, try this one. I'm like, okay. And I looked at it, and I'm like, this thing is funny looking. He said, ah, it's, it's a, one of those, what do you call it, a pig? Uh, a pigtail? Right pigtail, yeah. At the end, yep. Yep. So uh, uh, it's a Sumatra sun-grown uh, Ecuador wrapper. Uh, the binder's from Valle del, and I'm going to butcher this up. Is that Sabio? Sabio? Uh, oh, Dominican yeah. Republic. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, yeah, it looks like a, a mini. It actually looks like a flying flying pig. Flying yeah. pig, right. exactly. yeah, it looks like a flying pig size. Uh, so yeah, uh, and I and I said that, and then I went in and looked at I looked it over, and I'm like, oh, it's a zeppelin. So and I looked at it, I'm going, okay, yeah. It yeah, is actually, Half Wheel has a Liga Provada number nine flying pig next to it, and they're pretty they're pretty similar. Yeah, very similar, exactly. Uh, uh, the filler is made up of tobaccos uh, from the Dominican Republic uh, uh, via the Sabio. Uh, strength on it was upper medium full. Uh, the well aged construction was very perfect. I mean, that cigar held together pretty well. Uh, the ash, great, very uh, ash uh, was in gray in color. Uh, the burn was very consistent, and then the, uh, of course, the it's the the Sumatra uh, wrapper, uh, lightly toasted, red, a uh, little bit oily, not too bad, but uh, overall good looking cigar. Uh, debuted in China uh, initially, and then now it's available worldwide. From uh, and I got that information from their site. Uh, uh, so taste notes for me on that one uh, started off uh, peppery uh, in the beginning, uh, and it just very nice uh, medium flavor. Uh, when I got to the second third of it, the deep tobacco flavors really started to come in and kick in, which is very nice. I love the dark uh, cocoa. Uh, the spice uh, uh, came through uh, nicely. Uh, this cigar uh, moves to a full body as well, and it takes a turn 
on, on a street journey to finish off. Uh, this cigar surprisingly took me about an hour and five minutes to, to, to enjoy. Uh, and then I started to uh, kind of look through the process uh, on the arrangement of the tobaccos and, and uh, which then kicked in the complexity of it. Um, but uh, for me, I mean, it was definitely a, a cigar that I can definitely buy a fiver. That's going to be my rating on it, a fiver. Stick it in my humidor, and, and uh, those times when I don't have a lot of, you know, time, um, I can go to that. Because uh, typically I like the hour and a half, the hour and 15-minute cigar, uh, you know, with my favorite drinks, of course. And uh, um, But like I said, for me, it's just – it was a real – a well experienced uh cigar uh the shape of it um uh like i said trust it's like a trussled uh shape uh like a, like, a, like a zeppelin um but for me it was just one of the one of the great uh uh new cigars out in the market today yeah yeah what was it again for the audio listeners they ask us to repeat it at the end because they won't, don't sure. want to go back yep so that was the la roa 107 mm -hmm. zeppelin uh four by five uh four by fifty eight uh gauge uh and again you can't go wrong with this one uh uh i believe they sell these in a box of ten i i went with a fiber on this one and uh because i have so many other things <laughs> in the sure. box that i like to enjoy uh but uh if you want to do a box split as well with somebody else uh definitely uh it's not a bad cigar to invest in mm. Awesome. Yeah, I think those are pretty cool sizes to, to smoke. They don't often are, like, really high rated, right, because the size is kind of weird. The original mm -hmm. Liga number nine flying – no, was it number nine flying pigs was the first one they released? Those yes. were Those were really good. Yeah. Yes, they are. Now, this cigar in the bottle, Joe, uh, I would rate it Fight Chuck Norris. Yeah. In my rating on that one, right? Yeah, it doesn't get Oasis like you said. It kind of died out. Yeah, it, it it does die out, and 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 with with that price tag, sure, uh, I would I would definitely give it Fight Chuck Norris for sure. Uh, um, like I said, it, um, our backup cigar from that, we had a little bit of a time constraint because it does take quite a little bit of time to to get through that that cigar. We ended up with the Davidoff Seven O Two. Mm. Just for the record, you know what I mean. So it's like you know, it's like when you're when you go in cigars the back when you go open sex and then switch over to Davidoff, you kind of can't go wrong. It was a rough day, right? You know, someone. <laughs> it, 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 it was a rough day. Rough day. <laughs> it was a rough day at the I, office. It was a long flight. I, it was a long flight for me. I was like, oh my god, like I, I can sat. imagine that bill now. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite the bill. Uh, oh. The bill was at the Davidoff. Um, that I, I, was the uh, bill. The bill was at the yes. Davidoff when Paul, fi Paul finds his rear smoke and he gets it. And, like, the next day he's like, Joe, I'm not supposed to spend this much money on one stick. Like, like Joe, where were you? <laughs> I, I, I was unsupervised in a humor over a few drinks to me. This is a bad situation. <laughs> yeah. Where did we go before? Davidoff, we went to Batista's first. Right? I think the, so. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. yeah. After 12 hours of filming. Yes. So we were all punchy anyway. And was, then we, we went over there. But, yeah, for sure. Joe, what have you been smoking, dude? I had the Drew Estate Herrera Esteli Miami. Uh, mm. This it cigar is available in uh, a few different sizes. It's the Robusto Grand, which is 5x50, Toro Especial, 6x52. I had it in that size, the 6x52. I also had it in the Longsdale size, which I tend to kind of gravitate uh, towards. When, when I was doing my comparison, it's a six and a half by 44. It's also available in a pyramid Fino size and a short Corona Gorda size. In regards to wrapper binder filler, your wrapper is Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro. Your binder is Sumatra from Ecuador. And your filler is from Nicaragua and Dominican Republic. I actually like this smoke, and when it comes to Drew Estate line of smokes, non-acid or some of the infused stuff, like the Herrera Estelis, I don't know, like like I, I kind of really dig them, you know. I um I I really kind of get into that blend. When they came up with this Miami blend, uh, it was um given to me from a recommendation, uh, from the humidor manager next door over. Uh, at Havana C Cigar Club. And it starts off a little bit of espresso. It's got some pepper in it. It's just, to me, it's ultra smooth. Um, it really has, like, this kind of dark brown wrapper. 
Uh, it's a really great experience for, for, for you to have. If you can, not all of shops have access to this. Uh, I'm like 99% sure that it has to do with like a tiered purchasing platform that, that, that Drew Estate has for, uh, some of the retail shops. So some of your bigger shops would have this. This was the Herrera Esteli Miami. I had it in two different sizes. I gave it, I, I I gave it a um, a box split because I've honestly burned through at least five within two weeks of this stick. Uh, I used three for my review, and I have a few more that uh, I have tucked away in my humidor. They won't last long, so I gave it a box split. Nice. Uh, do we want to do? Uh, let's do the Davidoff then. Uh, so we went to the Davidoff Lounge. <laughs> <sighs> me, let me set the scene now. We had 12 hours of filming. Well, not we. Paul and some other of the cybersecurity hosts had 12 hours straight of filming um, of Security Weekly interviews. Then we hopped in our, uh, it wasn't an Uber, our chauffeur driver. We had a driver. And, and he took I mean, us, don't get me wrong, it drove a minivan, so that's not like we had a fancy driver, but like <laughs> we had a lot of people that needed to get from point A to point B in a timely manner, which in Vegas is really ne impossible unless you hire a private driver. Uh, so it, it worked out as a, a, a business expense wise, actually cost probably pretty similar for all to take taxis and Ubers all over the place. Sure. Yeah. Um, we, you know, so we did throw that out there. Like we had a driver, but it was a practical uh, expense. Right. So you sure? Uh, so here in Texas, we don't have minivans uh, for for uh, drivers. We have sprinters that mm -hmm. are nicely set up. So, um, yeah. So that's I'm thinking that's where you guys like to be in a sprinter. What's a sprinter? Is that? So it's like a, it's like a van, but it's a large van, like a yeah. cargo van. But man, they put the nice leather seats in there, the nice little tables. Looks oh, like yeah. a mini RV. Yeah, no, this was like a minivan, like cloth seats. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's totally, yeah. Oh, hey, just to let you know, Joe, a yeah. question you asked me earlier about my cap tax here in Texas. Yeah, yeah. It's zero zero point one. Really? Yes. So, so you get the so the cigar shop keystones the stick, then it's zero zero point one plus the sales yeah. tax, which is eight and a half percent. Yes, sir. Uh, eight point two five. Yeah, eight point two five percent. Wow, that's crazy. Yes. Yeah, here in Rhode <laughs> Island, we have a uh, fifty cent cap tax, so every stick has a fifty cent cap. Um, oh wow! All right, so we were at Davidoff. Oh, this tax yes. is <laughs> <laughs> reel the reins in, reel the reins in. We're at Davidoff after a, a lot of drinking and stuff, and we walk into the humidor, which is dangerous, and I start looking. And I see this stick, <laughs> and I'm like. What is that? I'm like, I, I recognize the, and now that I think about it, I do remember that when this came out in the Robusto, and then I do vaguely remember it was in a Salomon, but largely I remember, so there's, uh, thanks to Half Wheel, four sticks in the Royal, I call it the Royale because they're fancy expensive cigars, it's not Royal, it's Royale, so uh, in the Royale series, they make a Robusto and a Salomon in a lighter wrapper with a white band. Now, I uh, Davidoff Royale Salomon eight and a quarter by fifty seven. They're about fifty bucks retail per stick. They come in boxes of fifty, and I think there's even cabs of a hundred for like five grand, right? Um, and I bought some of those for special occasions when I smoke them. Totally Oasis, dude. I mean, they are truly an Oasis stick. You see me smoking them. I think the last one I smoked might have been at our Christmas party last year. Was the last one that I smoked in the Half Wheels picture makes the wrapper look darker. But the ones with the white bands, I think, do have a lighter wrapper than the the other two, which are the Royale Release Robusto and Royale Release Salomon. And that's what I picked up when I was in the Davidon. And I picked it up, and I'm like, is this thing any good? And the guy in the humor was like, dude, it's the best cigar I've ever smoked in my whole life. I'm like, all right. I'm like, I'll take one. Then I'm like, wait, how much is it? He's like, it's 150 bucks. I'm like, all right, I'm definitely going to take just one. <laughs> And so Half Wheel says these retail normally for a hundred dollars, so I paid a fifty dollar uh, Vegas, Vegas tax, shot. which could have got wow. me another regular Royal Salomon, which I'm now I'm kind of kicking myself for. Um, so this, and I have not smoked this one yet because I'm afraid I'm afraid to smoke. Like I spend 150 bucks on it, like I got, I feel like I should meditate or something before I smoke it. Uh, <laughs> it's eight a quarter by fifty seven. Uh, it's Dominican Aromatica, 
binder and filler are not available. Um, the MSRP is $100. It was released in 2016. And now I remember we did talk about this on the show uh, when this was released. And Half Wheel gave it a 91. Um, and like I said, the other uh, similar version to this, it's cousin or brother or sister, whatever, right, uh, is Oasis in my book. So it was a big bill because they put everything, all my cigars and drinks on one bill. It was a big bill. And the drinks were pretty good. We had some old fashions there. And I smoked one of their, they had a bunch of like special release Davidoffs for the Vegas one. They were pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I brought a couple more home as well. Um, so I will come back and, and let you know how this uh, cigar was when I muster up the courage to smoke my $150 that I just dropped cigar. <laughs> <laughs> when, now, now the big question is like, when, like what, what occasion? Maybe Christmas party this year. That's what I'll light up, right? Special occasion. Okay. So there you have it. There you go. Not much else to be said because, I mean, these are, these are special, really expensive cigars that you, you probably only smoke, you know, every once in a while as a special occasion. The Royale, oh, yeah. so it's confusing because there's the Royale. The Royale is a white band. Royale release has a blue band and a blue uh, box. And it's a little confusing because the only difference is the word release, which is weird. Because you could call the other one the Royale release, but it's not. It's the Royale and Royale release. There you have it. Gorgeous. I mean, the blue with the natural wood and the dark wrapper on the cigar with the, they've got the white Davidoff band and the, you know, the blue Davidoff band. I mean, it's just, it's just gorgeous to look at. And I mean, the, of course, the wrapper is like impeccable uh, to look at. So. Uh, but like one of my favorite Salomones, uh, certainly, uh, at least the, the Royale is. So Christmas party, then you'll find out how, how good the, if it was worth 150 But I know cigars worth $150. I mean, seriously, don't, don't do know. that. Go buy a box of something for 150 bucks. <laughs> Why did you do it? Because you found it. Because I was a little drunk, maybe even more than a little drunk and I was in a humidor and I'm like, I got to have that. And then because my inhibitions were, were out the window and you weren't d babysitting me properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, day, un yeah. <laughs> I was, there was no supervision for me. The <laughs> next day. He you should have said, Paul, are you sure you want to spend 150 bucks? I probably would have said, yeah, I'm sure. And you would have been like, oh, okay. But at least you would have tried. You didn't even try. You're like, oh, Paul's buying 150 dollars. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> In defense of me, there's two things that I have to say to that. It's you called, were of three sheets to the wind as well. <laughs> we came from a restaurant that you walk in and they it's like walking into a Billy Joel video. They give you a bottle, a bottle of, red, of red, a bottle, bottle of white. white. Like you, if you walk in, maybe the some rosé instead. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean. You, every table you walk in, and I'm like, damn, I love this place already. I didn't even eat yet, right? You walk in, a bottle of red, a bottle of white for the table. Boom, and and, and they just uh, keep bringing and more, they, and they keep bringing it, and they keep bringing it, and of course, and it's good wine. The red wine's pretty good. I don't know what it, if it, it, it maybe Chianti. That yeah, was good. It, it was, was it was really good. It was very good. Plus, we were drinking before while we were filming and working yes, on the work. security side, working. and you know. But in defense of me, not only do I have the bottle of red and bottle of white, it's called Paul Security Weekly, not Joe Security Weekly. So if Paul wants to spend one hundred fifty dollars on a cigar, knock yourself out. That's all I look right? at. You know what I mean? I'm not. You know. But the next day is like, why'd you let me spend that money on a cigar? I was like, hey man, that's your that's your gig, not mine. You know. <laughs> hey, we get we get to talk about it on the show. Yeah. I mean, if we hadn't, you know, had the show. It's one reason why I had to come back. If I'm going to spend that, I got to talk about it on the show. There you go. Right. So. Right. We'll find out if it's worth a hundred or hundred fifty bucks. But the thing is, you have to come back and do the review. I'm I not do. Uh, read yeah, it. I know. Paul well, says it yeah. was. No, nope. I will come back and do the review. <laughs> there you Absolutely. Go. There you go. I had the Crux Epicure Robusto. Uh, this has an Ecuadorian Connecticut uh, wrapper, binder, and filler on Nicaragua. It's uh, five by fifty. Uh, this came out. It's in regular production. It came out in November of 2017. The only way I can describe it is kind of part of the movement that I think that's coming up now with Connecticut's is we're uh, as consumers if you're going uh, like an Ecuadorian Connecticut with some Nicaraguan component um, the Connecticut's are getting more complex right so therefore I would dub it as a complex Connecticut it doesn't make it strong to me it's kind of barely medium uh, there uh, uh, Crux certainly has made some some stronger uh, sticks for sure, 
but it's a complex Connecticut kind of dances around a little bit in regards to the taste you know it gets it gets uh you know medium and then it kind of fades out a little bit and then it comes back smoked it down to the nub super cool stick awesome price tag to it there you're in that like seven dollar eight dollar price range uh there that was the crux epicure robusto and i would definitely give that a fiver for sure cool your next nice. drink I was going to say, Paul, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Including my 150 bucks for a cigar. Right. Including 50 bucks. <laughs> and the taxi ride. <laughs> yeah. So my next one I have is a Macanudo Inspirito. Ins- Inspirito. Aspirito. I think the whiskey's hitting me now. I like Inspirito. Uh, Inspirito yeah. sounded good, Drew. It's yeah, good. Inspirito. Uh, Palladium. Uh, I smoked the Lonsdale. Six and three quarter by 43. This is by the under the umbrella of General Cigar Company. Uh, wrapper was Ecuador, Ecuadorian Connecticut Shade, uh, binder Connecticut Havana, and then a filler of Dominican. Uh, it had and So basically, this is a five, uh, uh, five tobaccos, uh, I guess, as they, as they, they touted on the website. Uh, so Dominican Republican, uh, Dominican filler, Nicaraguan filler, and Mexico filler. So the strength on this was a medium. Uh, I, I, when I, when I lit this stick, uh, man, uh, it was one of those. So I, let me just jump a little bit. Uh, the tis, tisiro aging system, uh, aging. Do you guys know about that? What's it called again? The tercio, tercio, T-E-R-C-I-O aging. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way they, the way they, uh, they, uh, they describe it, it's an aging uh, is something not commonly used because of the cost involved in do, uh, with doing it. Uh, it has been uh, introduced in the EP Carrillo Encore and the Quesadera uh, Reserva Provada line. Uh, so this cigar is available in three sizes, uh, each presented in uh, 10 count boxes. Uh, 3,000 were being released. Uh, they got the Robusto at five and a half and fi- uh, five and a half by fifty. The Lonsdale, as I just spoke about, uh, six and six and three quarter by forty three, and then a Churchill at seven and a half by forty nine. Uh, so for me, this this cigar this cigar came out uh, uh, with the sweet uh, uh, sweet in the in the beginning. Uh, uh, the pros uh, the uh, mellow. Uh, just very easy, nice, something you can relax in the afternoon uh, without a lot of heaviness to it. Uh, you don't have to eat anything much, uh, you know, uh, prior to having a cigar. Uh, it's, uh, I guess, part of the process and uh, the labor-intensive process where the box-like structure are made by hand using pliable palm bark. So this was a little bit interesting to me. Uh, not a little bit. It was a lot interesting to me, and I'm still doing some homework on it. Oh, yeah. We did an uh, interview with uh, about that process, didn't we? With the palm leaves and all that stuff. That's a, Isn't that the, the DNA or whatever? Is that after, after it's cured, then they put the palm leaves like to separate it? Well, they then, roll, it's yes. One of them, they roll them in palm leaves, too. It's another different, probably different yeah. method. But, yeah. So, yeah, this cigar, I mean... Uh-oh. Smoked very, uh, very easy, uh, mild. Uh, everything came through. The uh, didn't have to touch it up uh, all but once. I think because I was talking to my wife about something. <laughs> and uh, other than that, uh, uh, the spices uh, were very, very mild, mellow. Uh, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, cinnamon, uh, and I got a little touch of graham cracker, and that's something I don't get too much uh, in my smoking uh, experience. Uh, when people say that, I'm like, oh. Okay, I get you now. Um, but, yeah, this cigar definitely, uh, uh, I gave it a box split. Uh, it's something that I can definitely uh, take in my uh, humidor or put it in my humidor and just kind of go to it uh, for a nice, mellow cigar. Cool. Mm. Yeah. What was it again? It was the Macanudo in Spirit. Inspirito mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Palladium. Uh, this was a Lonsdale six and three quarter by forty three. 
Yeah, see, I think it's super cool. That. And wait, what was your rating on that, Drew? Oh, uh, that was a box, box split for me. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I think it's super cool because Drew is from Texas, and like we wouldn't even get to that. Like here in the Northeast, like yeah. you know what I mean. Like like when when Drew sends me his reviews, usually on Wednesday, and we start to round the bases toward towards getting uh, uh, show prep. It's like it's stuff that I wouldn't even. Yeah, that's great. Like, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't like Macanuno's here. I'm thinking it's uh, platinum, and yeah, you get the any, regular any white label. Yeah, Macanuno, and maybe uh, they mess around with one of the smaller blends that when they kind of mess around with with like a Maduro and they've been sitting on the shelf for tons of time. I think most of the stuff here yes. in the Northeast is a lot of boutiques. So you find yeah. a lot of boutiques. The stuff from larger companies, General Altidus, you largely got to go other places in the country to get any of their specials even like rocky patel it has some blends i really like i can never find them here in the northeast because they i they don't they don't move right yeah uh so you either go buy them online or find them in another shop somewhere yeah that's why i think it's super cool to get his perspective as well yeah. for, for, for the yeah. listeners because it's something for us we would find it if we were traveling yeah you know and this stick uh, again i mean it's it's in the eight to eleven dollar range just depending on where you're at regionally uh so it's very doable if you do a box uh but you know for me it's just myself and uh um my partners they like to they like to walk into a humidor and just kind of pick out something different every time which is cool uh and i and i encourage that uh to build up their uh their uh profile and what they like yeah absolutely so now we get to talk about arturo fuente uh 858 the well, so oh. uh, so is an Arturo Fuente Florfina eight five eight. It comes in a number of different wrappers, five. five uh, one of which the Rosado is super rare. Yep. Uh, one of which is the Sun Grown, which is rare but not as rare as, certainly as the Rosado. Uh, and then it has regular releases in a Natural, which is a Cameroon, uh, a Clara, which is a Candela or Candela. Uh, is what they call that one, uh, and a Maduro, um, which, all right, so hold on, let me let me go through I've the, had the Sun Grown. Well, I've had the regular A582, the Cameroon. I think I've had all, maybe not the, the Claro, is the Candela. Mm -hmm. um, and so the history behind this is kind of interesting. So before I get into the, the different types, um, I always thought A588 was in reference to how they pack the cigars, right? Eight cigars on the bottom, five in the middle, eight more on top. Now, when you get like a bundle, right? Like a, a, a different kind of shaped bundle in that sure. uh, rectangular, or I don't know what you call that. It's escaping me at the moment. You get like a bundle that's not a perfect square, right? In that eight, five, eight. And there's some yes. history that goes back to Cuba, right? And that's how they used to box them up. Now, I, I suck at math, but when I use my calculator, right? That's 21 cigars in the box. When you look at them today, they largely come in boxes of 25. So they're not packed today in that 858 format because the math doesn't work out. Uh, there's uh, an article that I believe originally appeared on CigarFamily.com. Uh, multiple sites, Cigar Advisor, I even think Cigar Aficionado may have conducted the original interview where they asked Carlo Fuente Sr., about the 858 and what's the history behind it. Uh, and they reference this on the Fuente website as well. And Carlos Fuente says, uh, Sr. says, you know, my father showed me how to blend tobaccos in a shape which later became known as the Florfina 858. His father passed away at the age of 85. As a way of honoring him and as a means of expressing our eternal love for him, we called it 858 so the number would be legible from both directions. Mm -hmm. Also the age, you know, when, when he passed away as well. Um, it became very well accepted. It's one of the most popular, most sold cigars today on the market. Also, some of my research uh, pointed to. Um, Carlos says his, uh, his father was instrumental in originating this cigar and says he would be delighted to know that the 858 is still their largest selling shape, mm. uh, in fact. Uh, and so that shape is 858 does not speak to the shape. It is actually a 6 by 47 and comes in a number of different wrappers, as I mentioned, the Claro uh, wrapper, uh, which now comes in boxes of 25. Uh, there's a slightly more rare Sun Grown, which I have a box of in my humidor as well. I try and keep a box of Sun Growns around because they're just so good. 
Um, the Sun Grove made its debut in October of 2000 as a prize given to participants of a Fuente display contest that comes from the Cigar Authority uh, website from Dave uh, Garofalo. Um, and uh, Barry is likely the one that wrote um, this review. Um, and the Sun Grown is an Ecuadorian uh, sun grown wrapper. Uh, it's, you know, medium strength and uh, it gives some of the history in that review as well. They range in price. The amazing part for me, this is not an expensive cigar at all. They, we just talked about like one of the most expensive cigars I've ever bought. These cigars are like five and change to seven and change, depending on where and how you get them. And while the Sun Grown He lists is seven dollars and twenty nine cents, you can find online boxes of twenty five gets that price down to five dollars and twenty cents plus shipping. You can find them in retailers largely for around six dollars uh, a cigar. Uh, and for that price point, I tell you what, all the different wrappers are. You should at least try them and probably have a box of at least one type in your humidor. Most people do, in mm. fact. Uh, most cigar smokers keep these as one of their regular sticks because of the price point. Mm. The Maduro is a Connecticut broadleaf uh, wrapper, of course, in the in the same size. Uh, the Natural is a Cameroon wrapper. I'm not sure if it's a true African Cameroon or one of those seeds they brought over. Cameroon seeds they grow in Ecuador or maybe the Dominican uh, I'm not sure about that. Someone could probably tell me for sure, or maybe they don't want to disclose, you know, where it's coming from. But the natural is uh, a Cameroon wrapper, and that brings us to the most rare, actually one of the most sought after and most rare cigars, maybe around today uh, or, or in history, one of the most sought after cigars. Uh, certainly for the price point, having a rare cigar be at this price, price point from Fuente. Uh, and we talked about the 60 to $75 cigar we, we smoked while we were out there. So it's an A58 Rosado Sun Grown. Um, Mark Jr. is the one that first told me about this cigar. He had smoked a couple uh, and had a couple in his humidor. I think he traded with me and I smoked one. It was really, really that one he gave me was, uh, had a lot of age on it. It was spectacular. Um, the first incarnation was released in 2002. This is from Half Wheel. Uh, it was 87 boxes of 50 that were only sent out to 29 retailers nationwide who won a contest from the cigar company. Mm. Um, which is interesting because the Sun Grown, they also did in the contest. Um, it wasn't the last time we've seen this blend, of course. 2009, Fuente released an unknown number of cigars in smaller 20 count boxes. Uh, retailers that year at IPCPR. Uh, they bought 25 boxes of a regular Fuente product, got one of those special 858 uh, Sun Growns, and then they were again re-released in 2018, all carrying that uh, price point of roughly uh, $6 or $6.33 for mm. uh, a stick. And so we were in Casa Fuente, and I had another cigar. Did I bring that one out? I did. So this one also has a Rosado wrapper. I don't remember what this one is, but it's very unique. I've never seen it before. It's got a gold uh, sleeve on it. Um, and this has a Rosado wrapper. Uh, this is like a 60 ring uh, in the, uh, it says Rosado Grain Reserva on it. Uh, and just because it has a Rosado wrapper doesn't mean like instantly it's going to be amazing. Um, but uh, that is a, a Rosado wrapper. So when I saw this, I said, that's cool. I'll try one of those. I'm like, what about an 858 Rosado? You got any of those? And she's like, oh, you missed it by a week. And we're like, oh, that's like one of the most sought after ones, right? We're uh, telling her, like, she probably knew, like, the story behind it. We're not the first people to come in there asking for it. So we're sitting down. We're having our mojitos and our cigar. She comes over, taps me on the shoulder. She's like, oh, I found a box in the back. It's limit two per customer. So, you know, I grabbed four of them and we paid for them and, Probably the least expensive cigars we bought while we were out there, right? But one of the uh, most sought after uh, cigars uh, on the market, which is, uh, and for, uh, Half Wheel actually has two uh, reviews on them, uh, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. So it also says the Rosado wrapper was not a Fuente Fuente Opus X creation, but actually grown by the Oliva family in Ecuador and is the leaf that lays right below the huge Aston, Ashen VSG cloud-grown Corona leaves, which is kind of interesting, Corona being the top uh, priming of the plant. Um, yeah. 
and, and chronicles these cigars uh, even a little more. So uh, Half Wheel has two articles on them. You can find a lot of information online about them. People do say that the older ones are better, but that could be a byproduct of age or differences in the, the blending and, and crop for whatever year was coming out. So uh, I'll smoke one of these new ones that we got that are likely from the 2018 batch uh, mm -hmm. would be my guess uh, and weigh in on them. Uh, they're just fantastic. That there's something special about that wrapper on that blend specifically that is just very special and makes it one of the most sought after. And we happen to get lucky in the shop and <laughs> express <laughs> interest and you know how you express interest in rare things. And sometimes they magically find some in the back, right? Like had we not asked, she wasn't going to great lengths to go find that, right? So I think you have to, uh, in cigar and situations like that, kind of show your knowledge and passion and interest in things and magically they find them in the back. It's funny how that works. Had right? we not oh, yeah. had we not been five mojitos deep, just Paul and I, and then our client joined us with another two mojitos each mm -hmm. there, plus <laughs> what we had purchased, they magically appeared with a tap on the shoulder. Right. Oh, I happened to find these. Like, like really? Because <laughs> if you've been Because we asked you for them. Like, pretty spe I mean, it's pretty specific. Like, we didn't, like, we didn't even, like, bat an eye. We're like, A58 risotto. Like, we didn't even have to think about it, right? Right. So. It's amazing yeah, how it's that times. works, uh, for sure. I, I've had the Sun Grown 858, and that is such. I mean, hey, there's a box of them it's in gotta, there, yeah. It's got to be, like, I'm really digging the Sun Grown stuff. Sun Grown, that Sun Grown 858 is awesome. Stokey yeah. Santa, it's one of his favorite yeah. cigars. Yeah. Uh, he's the one that turned me on. He's like, dude, you got to pick a box. He's like, y you got to try. I'm like, I got to get a box. Like, this is, and again, they're not that expensive, right? Right, right. Yeah, so a Fluente 858 Sun Grown, can't go wrong. If you find a Rosado in your travels, grab one. I mean, they oh, carry yeah. like a Fight Chuck Norris Oasis rating, probably in our. I think is what I what I found in our review archive. So, I I didn't have mine yet. I'm waiting, and for me, I've waited what we I know went back from Vegas two weeks. That's like a freaking. I know. It's like a record. Like I'm like waiting. <laughs> you know, I'm not waiting till Christmas. That's what are we waiting for? Yeah, uh, we, just, <laughs> we just need to smoke them. You know, um, yeah, because it's it's like one of those things where you know I I want to wait till I got some either. Uh, some 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 time to to just kind of chill and kind yeah, of yeah that's that. a cigar I don't want necessarily want to do while I'm working right I want to be able to pay attention to it exactly <clears throat> yeah absolutely um I don't think I can top that story with this next one but I'm gonna just go into it I had the 300 hands uh, Maduro by uh, Southern Draw this came out at the IPCPR in 2018. Um, it's offered in five different sizes. You have a Churchill seven by forty-eight. Uh, you have a six uh, by one six and one eighth by fifty-two. You have a Corona Gorda, which is five and five eighths by forty-six. Really, like kind of like fractional sizes here, right? Uh, you have another one five and uh, five five and a quarter by forty-four, and a four and three fourths by fifty-two. So it's get it, it, some. I've actually had it in the five and a half by forty-four size and the five and five eighths by forty-six size. Your wrapper is from Esli Nicaragua. Your binder is from Indonesia. Your filler is from Dominican Republic and Nicaragua. Um, it, it's produced at the uh, AJ Fernandez factory over in Esteli, and you know it. It to me, it came out really, really dry, really, really earthy. Right, which I don't really gravitate towards tw towards sticks like that. But from my experience, it for an earthy stick uh, and for a dry stick, it was pretty smooth. I gave it a fiver. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I got to say about that. I I don't know which uh, you're smoking the God's Whisper Opus X twenty year celebration mm -hmm. six and a half by fifty six. How is that cigar doing, Joe? This cigar, well, first of all, I don't think it could have waited another month for you to smoke it. I it's, agree. It's I want to smoke. I, I don't think these are ones you got to sit on for three, four no. plus years, right? No, absolutely it's, not. You have to, you, when you get these and, you know, pick a time out and smoke them with probably within the next three months or so that you get them. How old are these? Oh, okay. yeah. Well, uh, these came out in 2016. Okay. So I got them probably 2017. 2017, yeah. It's not aged out, but 
Um, it's get yeah. It's it, it's, it's con- construction wise. These ones you gotta smoke when you get them. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting on a bunch more at home, which is why like I bought them kind of like different batches when they had them. I kind of you know because you're limited when you buy these. They're kind they're rare, of course, and yep. they're twenty two fifty or around twenty bucks a piece, right? They came in those yellow boxes that had the all the different sizes, like two of each size in them. Uh, I've seen them also where. It, uh, they had the full boxes of these coming boxes of 20, right? Uh, and so whenever I'd see them, I just, you know, I'd buy a bunch and I happened to get a full box in the, the yellow box. Uh, so I took that when I put it away and then I've brought all the rest of the like singles I had here and I've been smoking them little by little, basically for the past two years, I haven't been hitting them hard. Right. But recently I've been like, he's got to be smoked. Cause like you said, Joe, like I had a feeling these weren't going to hold up yeah. uh, too long with age. So the, this, mm. All the flavors in the retro hail. Yes. You know yeah, what I mean? it's a subtle. Like, it, yeah, it's, it's a not subtle. an Opus X. It's not a standard Opus X. Right, right. And so, it's not a Lost City. It's not a Forbidden X. It is a very unique Opus blend, uh, beautifully packaged. The packaging is some of the most beautiful I've ever seen. But the blend is really good. Uh, I don't know what size I'm smoking. Might be the, if I had to guess, I would say... I think that was a five and three quarters. Was that six and three eighths? It's hard. They're both the same ring gauge. I'm going to go as a power of a dream. Six and three eighths by 52 uh, is the other one. There's also a believe, which is a five and three quarters by 52. A father and son, which is a six and a quarter Mm -hmm. by 49. This wasn't a 49 ring gauge, I don't think. Uh, And then you're smoking the God's Whisper, which is a six and a half by 56 Figurato. Yeah. All the rest are... Uh, more standard Vitolas. If you regular inhale this or a regular go through the mouth and not retrohale it, you're like, all right, it's it's got a sweetness component to it, yes. right? But if you retrohale it, you're like, okay, now you're really starting to get some of the flavors for it. You 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 have to work for the retrohale for this cigar, but it is it is ultra tasty. It's it's burning super cool, but I'm really glad that you didn't let these age out anymore. Yeah, so if was- you have any more. <laughs> I think we should smoke them. I think you should put them we on my just desk. Smoke and, them, and then we'll we'll uh, have them and enjoy them for sure. When you die, someone else is going to smoke them, so <laughs> I can, uh, <laughs> might as well smoke them now, right? Uh, so this, of course, uh, what Half Wheel says about this one. Uh, Ninety-two. They developed a technique that allowed them to produce the first reliably successful wrapper crop, which by 1995 was ready to be used on the new Opus X line. So it was the 20th anniversary. Uh, of Opus X, uh, and some again. I mean, nothing to do with a cigar. It like literally is the most beautiful packaging I've ever seen in my entire life. Like you just you got to go look at the. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and these are not strong like the Opus X, which no. in my opinion right. has to sit for at least three or four years. Um, I like to sniff the foot of the Opus X of the cigar, not other people's foot or my foot, but the foot <laughs> of the cigar. <laughs> Sniff the foot. If you get that, like, it's like a pungent, like, cat pee. <laughs> it's like stale cat pee. <laughs> like, literally, if it smells like ammonia or, like, cat pee kind of thing. It's not ready. Put it down. It's not ready. Yep. Not ready. Right. And I feel like, like a wine snob, you know, like, I, I'm like, no, nah, it's not ready yet. Like, it's a, but once that, that cat pee. <laughs> Paul does, uh, just for demonstration, since we have a visual component oh, yeah. here as well, you gotta sp- Paul does gotta, take yeah. it out of the wrapper and literally walks around like, the office. Yeah, and he's like, "Gonna put it like right up your it's nose, going man!" Back, right, yeah, and, it's, then, it's, and then and then he puts it back in a tray in a humidor behind me. Right, and now I try to decipher which ones that he's going like this for. Yeah, <laughs> before you know, right up in there. I mean, you're gonna light that end on fire, so it's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's all good, but. Um, you know. I just think it's fascinating because he'll but sit it's there. But it's interesting. And he'll sit there and bar, you know, he, he he has orders for you, right? He's the owner, so you're like. Okay. Nah. All right. Not yeah. ready. Anyway, by the and, and then he gets into business. It's like, dude, really? Like, Take it away. <laughs> Take it away. I don't. It's not ready. It's not ready. And uh, but like magically, three, four, five years in, you do that same sniff test, and it turns into this sweet cinnamon uh, wow. aroma. How do you wait three, four, five years to smoke something? Because it's worth the wait. You have to. Like, I Because it I, goes I, from cat pee to cinnamon, Joe. <laughs> you got to wait right? for the cat pee to cinnamon transition with your open sack. True. Are you patient like that? Like, do, do you have cigars that you're sitting on for the next four years? 
oh, I had that cigar that you guys were talking about. And Nomi gave that to me about three months ago. And he said, it's not ready yet. I'll let you know when it's ready. And he goes, you just got to, you just got to smell that foot. And when that pungentness goes yeah. away, it's ready. I'm like, okay. So, uh, yeah, I go. am sitting on a couple of uh, Opus, uh, uh, X lines in my humidor. Where is that c- cigar sitting in your humidor? Is it the bottom? You open it every day. Do you have one humidor? You open like what? Wh- like that would drive me nuts. Yeah, no, it's at the like, bottom, definitely, because <laughs> uh, I do go in there about well, once a day. Yeah, checking checking the uh, the uh, the humidity and making sure everything is you know aging well. Yeah, you got to uh, check on your babies, man. You got to make sure there's right. no sign of you know moisture, mold, bugs, uh, oh, any of oh, that yeah. stuff. You got. I don't check every day, but uh, every once in a while I go in. Especially, I've got an Opus Twenty Two set. Oh wow! From 2015 that we bought for the show, and like when when I got, I was like, "Dude, there's no way we can smoke." We're like, "We're not smoking these on the show for like another three, four years." So uh, right. now it's you know 2019, and we're you know we're getting ready. Now there's some interesting. There's some angel share in there, which I don't think has to age as long. That we need to pull out and do on a show uh, as well, and then I think move into the other ones, Joe, uh, and and smoke some of those on the show. And those are all individual coffin, you know. Um, oh, yeah. We've smoked through a couple of those special sets over the years. Well, maybe you two can help me because where does this patience come from? Because I don't have it. Like, I legitimately do not have it. You just got to, you need <laughs> just a drawer in there. Like, yep. you know, and like, there's a sensor on it. When you go in there, it gives you like a little zap, like, stay away, Joe. And there's a timer. And when the time is right, <laughs> then you can smoke them. Like, five years? Like, I don't know. I just, if it's not ready to smoke, five years is, uh, is, is optimal. I because I brought out that bag, an Opus that I, I had bought, like yeah, I five, that. you know, and yeah. we smoked them all. Because I'm like, you know what? After this time, I don't know. I've smoked some of the original Opus, right? Even a few years ago, and I'm like, yep. yeah, the first third's great, and then it tastes like air, and it's like we missed out. You know what I mean? So I, I think there is, <laughs> especially with Opus, a, a magic time. That was so. a great day at work. Paul had cleaned out his home humidor. Yeah, because I looked, I'm like, these are like five, six years old. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sitting on these any longer. He they need to be smoked in, now. He comes into work with a Ziploc bag and puts like, I don't know, eight, ten opuses on my desk, a uh, desk, and says, "Yeah, we, we got to smoke these soon." I'm like, "Okay, let's do it." Like, you yeah, we I mean? smoke, we <laughs> smoke. Uh, you know, but if, if he had I come smoked. in, if he had come in and said, "Hey, man, I was doing some shopping over the weekend. I went to this function, and by the way, you see these ten cigars? We got to wait five years." I'd be like, "Dude." Are you serious right now? <laughs> like, it would just kill me. It kills me. I don't know. Right? I, I smoked you... probably 20 or more from like four, five, six, whatever the oldest ones were in those bags in my humidor. I mean, I smoked probably 20 of them or, or better. Uh, and, and I gave them to some of the other hosts and Joe and stuff that, you know, can appreciate those kind of cigars. I'm like, you guys got to oh, yeah. try this, right? So. I don't know that I could have gotten through maybe all of them in in a, in a timely manner. So it's nice to share, right? Yeah, I blew through them all ten. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, smoke them too. Like, I didn't even I didn't even like review them for the show because it's like, hey, so you geek listener, I give it a great rating, but you gotta wait five years, and that's not my. You do. <laughs> I just I, I don't I. Can't. Well, my my issue now is like I gotta find some. Now I gotta start backfilling, right? Because now like I've right? gone into the oldest ones in my humidor, oh. and now like the, the horror cl- <laughs> clock is ticking. Like I gotta I can't replace the older ones unless you want to pay exorbitant prices or trade on forums and stuff, and I, I don't have time for that but i want to buy new ones that are coming out so i got those <laughs> so i can go back and smoke my old one it's a rotation once you build up over three four years that collection then oh, yeah. then you're good right you're smoking the older ones before they age out you're back filling with newer ones and it's just it's just a rotation moving forward if i'm gonna smoke good stuff now that that's what i'm gonna do dude you gotta and you gotta have patience like five years yeah. from now there'll be a five in front of my age I can't. That's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I I do admire the patience, but I just, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm from a different camp. See, you're like I am with with whiskey. Okay. Right? And because some of my friends, um, like, you know, Dave Kennedy, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll do like a video call with him. And in his office, right, he's got like all these bourbons and scotches behind him. And, you know, some of my other friends have, like, these huge cabinets, and it's just full of whiskey. I'm like, dude, that shit doesn't last in my house. Like, I buy a nice <laughs> bottle of scotch or bourbon, right? Like, my father-in-law comes over, my brother-in-law and friends come over. 
and like we're drinking it right and you it's gone and then like in a month or a few weeks later or whatever i go i gotta go back to the store and buy some more like i, I don't because that stuff's not aging in the bottle once it hits the glass mm -hmm. right so i like i can't like i can't not drink it like it's that's what it's there for i i give props to people that have the willpower or the budget to go out and buy you know all these huge bottles of scotch and stuff uh, look at me with my 150 dollar cigar but still <laughs> i i just I, I can't build up the collection i can't maybe i got too many friends and family that i like that i share it with i think that's part of the issue maybe i don't know like i i just the patience is just it just it's always fascinated me uh here on 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 the show when 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 you were on more frequently and you're like yeah let's age four years or three years i'm like are you serious? Cuban like, cigars, so Cuban cigars, you got to sit on for like 10 years. 10 years, yeah. We actually I don't had have the guy. patience for that. That, <laughs> that I don't. That's my, I'm like, I'll do five, five and a half, but not 10. Right? Three to five, like I'm good. <laughs> but like if there's a box of Cuban cigars sitting like those San Cristobal, De La Habana, La Punta, you can't see them on, can you see them on camera? You might not see them on camera. Yeah, that box is almost empty. Cause I'm like I, I can't I can't wait like it's maybe two years on the box but like I love smoking those things that's I think they're Cristobal, awesome. That's De La Habana La Punta. Is Dude, they're awesome. Yeah. And Mark Jr. turned me on to that cigar when he gave me ones that were ten years aged. Yeah. And dude, they were way better than the newer one. But I'm like I I can't wait that long. I'm sorry. I can't. And when he traded <laughs> with me for a bunch of like I smoked them. I'm like, dude, I'm out already. He's like, dude, that was just right? like last week. I'm like, I can't help it. They're so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Drew, you have another stick? You have one more, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I got one more. So cool. I'm going to jump ahead to the uh, Hoya de ne Nicaragua Numero Uno. Mm. So this is one of the new uh, uh, sticks from uh, Drew Estate's house. Uh, this is called the La Ambassador. Uh, it's a six, uh, 658 by 44. Uh, it's a wrapper Ecuadorian Connecticut shade, binder Nicaraguan, filler Nicarag Nicaraguan, strength is medium, so on this one, when I when Nomi gave me this one uh, this past week, because we just got our uh, some of our other shipments in from IPCPR, uh, you know, he says, Andrew, you got you got to you got to get this in there. And I said, okay. Uh, uh, the construction uh, when I looked at it was it looked tight, but once I cut it uh, and I did a cold draw on it, uh, that I knew the draw was going to be excellent, uh, which it was. Uh, uh, so on this one, on the history that I got from Halfway was only the most qu qualified tosaderos roll them. Uh, Nick, uh, Hoya de Nicaragua Numero Uno will be released nationally as part of the ultra premium family Ubras Maestros, which counts the Cuatro Cinco uh, and the Cinco Decadas. decadas. Uh, while remaining something exclusive, production for the global market is limited to 1,500 boxes per year, mm -hmm. and only selected retailers in the world will be able to sell it. So yep. this is a limited. Uh, if you get a chance, grab one. I'll tell you. Uh, this is one where the taste for me, uh, the pepper that came through, uh, mild, uh, and then the creaminess. Uh, uh, creaminess of it, silkiness uh, was in the uh, first part of it after I got past that little pepper. Uh, the pepper was still there, but not not as not as uh, overpowering. Uh, and then uh, from there, it, uh, on the second third, uh, the woody sweet uh, started to come in through, uh, uh, and it had a, just a slight pungent to me that's the best word i could figure it out but I, it wasn't you know like the pudgeon that we were talking about earlier uh this one here i i rated as a box worthy i mean uh a lot of the uh members that we have here that smoked this that had a chance to try this uh we all can agree that that ecuadorian connecticut shade wrapper man it just came through nice uh with the binder uh and of course the filler uh but Man, talking about a great cigar uh, for me, uh, box worthy. Uh, definitely can put it in my in my rotation probably uh, once a week. I do smoke now. I'm up to about six days a week. The only day I take off is Sunday because my wife says I need your fresh breath just for Sunday. <laughs> Fair enough. 
So, uh, but other than that, I mean, that's this cigar, uh, uh, enjoyable, uh, for me and my, and my, uh, members here at the, uh, prestige lounge and cigar, uh, lounge here in Bedford, Texas. I mean, we all enjoyed it. Uh, had nothing but great, uh, 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 reviews from their perspective. And, uh, man, it's, it's definitely one of the, the best, uh, Next on our next cigar review, I will be hitting out the uh, hitting up the Quattro, uh, Cinco and the Cinco Decadas. Uh, this cigar was priced about uh, 11, 11 bucks. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, great value. Uh, as I said before, you can definitely put it in your humidor and use it as a rotation cigar. Um, but like I said, it's only 15,000 boxes per year. So if you get one, consider yourself fortunate. If you don't, well, I guess you'll just get a single one and enjoy that wherever you can find them. Yeah, that's another example where I would think that that would be regionally specific. Uh, mm -hmm. You said that was from Hoy de Nicaragua, right? That's correct. Yeah, right. So when you were giving out the intro and you said that only the top tossy doors or tossy toes which is the, the the top rollers yes um actually uh were responsible for putting that cigar together um tells me that in that rotation that's the cream of the crop for that line for sure yes um i wish hoy de nicaragua played a little bit more of a presence here in the northeast it used to late uh late 90s early 2000s and then it kind of faded away again mm -hmm. to paul's testament that up here a lot of boutiques kind of take over that kind of um shelf space for sure yes but that's mm -hmm. one of those smokes that like i would probably seek out for sure you know oh definitely because i am such a fan of hoy de nicaragua they have medium to full profile super tasty pepper um, you, 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 you really start to kind of engage in that pepper profile, but it's pepper mm -hmm. with a creamy component. And with that being said, it's, it's like, you know, it's one of those sticks that I would say that you need to hold on to your humidor. And when we do our official swap of cigars and start to, to do a review, you got to yes. throw that one in there for, uh, for us for sure. Because I well, just don't definitely. think that we would have access to that i mean i will say though speaking of sharing cigars and reviewing them I, you've given me a lot of cigars in the past year maybe two mm -hmm. i gotta be honest like most of them weren't even worth talking about let's just put that out there right like well, i didn't yet. give them good ratings no you did no <laughs> and largely joe and i agreed like yeah this isn't anything right home about like didn't make me excited right there were two cigars Two cigars, and it's interesting, most recently that you've given me, that stand out amongst all the other cigars you've given me for the past, like, couple years, mm -hmm. right? Now, one of which is the easy one, because I think you rated this away. This was your first Oasis rating? Uh, yes. And uh, so you've obviously talked about this on the show, the Gilberto Oliva. Blanc. Mm. Reserva Blanc. Reserva Blanc. This comes from yes. the Oliva yep. family. Yep. Uh, I fight Chuck Norris all day long. Yep. Joe. Yes. Uh, did you you didn't you didn't give me one you rated it oasis i yep. was out shopping because i go online uh, occasionally i do some shopping and you can see over joe's head right now if you cut to just if you have a single shot of joe if you see over joe's head right <laughs> now go back to where you were uh, yeah right over joe's head you see those bundles there's three bundles in there uh that's the ep Carrillo new way reserva toro right i buy those in bundles for five dollars oh, yeah. and change a stick and they're just one of my uh, my everyday go-to. People know that, right? And I'm still, to this day, smoking them uh, all the time, loving them. Given our CEO, Matt, comes in once a month uh, for Security Weekly, I, mm -hmm. I give one to him. And he's like, dude, like out of all the cigars you give me, this one, it the draw is awesome. The flavor is awesome. Like consistently, it is. I'm like, dude, that's why I buy bundles of it. I don't break the budget buying them because I buy them in bundles. I don't care about the box or whatever, right? I buy them in bundles. Right. They had three bundles. I bought all three bundles. I'm like, ship them to me. Like, whatever. I like to smoke it, right? right. It's a light cigar. It's my, well, you know, morning kind of smoke. Um, and while I was doing the most recent ordering, I was looking through Joe's things, and Joe had rated this in Oasis, and I found these online. And I'm like, all right, let's order a box of these. Blind. Never smoked one. I'm like, I'm going to blindly trust Joe. Joe was spot on 
with your rate. Dude, you were spot on with your rating. I smoked one. I was like, the first puff, I was like, caught my attention. And that yeah. doesn't happen very often, right? right? right. You light up a cigar, and that first puff, I was like, oh, I'm in for a run. I'm like, yes. I was so excited. <laughs> um, so Joe and I are smoking our way through the box. You can take as many as you want. We'll, we'll buy more. I mean, this is going to become one of my regular rotation cigars. For me, it's Fight Chuck Norris. I think it's spectacular. Every couple out of that, out of this box, though, the Plug. draw's a little tight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I noticed that about the. I think that's really what held me back from an Oasis rating. If they had more consistency and one or two out of the box, I'm not. Uh, they're handmade. Like I get it. I'm not complaining, right? But it's like one out of five in in these boxes. Kind of, you know, have some issues, and I'll, I they're so good. I'll just go pull another one, right? And that drives the cost up a little, and I think speaks to the experience. But, uh, dude, these are awesome. I don't yeah. know where this came from. I uh, left field from Oliva. But. That that was uh, – I was at Churchill Smoke Shop and Lounge. Mm-hmm. Cigar shop owner uh, – that happens at the Regency. That happens next door at Havana. That happens at Churchill's. Happens at Old Firehouse where I go in and they're like, you got to try it. Just How many lounges do we have in this small state, Joe? Well, in this state, we have about – we have 39. <laughs> you uh, can't drive. <laughs> More you know, than a couple of miles. They're kind of like Dunkin' Donuts or yeah, Starbucks. They are. Yes. For, for, for right. all the hipsters that kind of listen, right? Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're like Starbucks here. So but you got one from one of the uh, stores. Got, yeah, yeah, and he's like, he's like, here, try it. And it happened again. The Brian at Churchill's, yeah, right? Bri- yeah. Great guy. And, yep. and, and it happened. He just, here, try it. And I was like, it's Connecticut. <laughs> it goes in the. Connecticut's are like the only thing I save. But even if I save, my patience is only like a week, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> then you're going to be so, like, I got to review it. I got to smoke right, it out. Right. So I was like, yeah. all right, I got to smoke it. I'll try it. And, and I remember I was uh, here part-time before I was full-time. Mm-hmm. And I, I left here and I went there to do my work for my business. And I was like, well, let me smoke this Connecticut, right? I lit right. it up and I literally said, okay, I'm shutting my laptop. This is something special, mm-hmm. right? And then I'm like, all right. Uh, it's good, you know. It's good. Notice he didn't shut his laptop for the Security Weekly work. Right. He shut his laptop for his own work. <laughs> yeah, right. Because if it was Security Weekly, he ain't saying that shit in front of me. <laughs> right. So I'm like, even if he did, I give you a pass for that cigar, right. Joe. Shut your laptop. <laughs> right. Take I'm a time like, out. Like, this is not something <laughs> special, right? I'm like, wow. And so I'm sitting, and I'm like, holy cow! Like I am getting old school tobacco flavor sweetness. The sweetness, sweetness is amazing. Yes, the amazing. Smoke is perfect. Have the you smoked these, Drew? I have. They're Very awesome, sweet. right? You agree oh, with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. They're doable at any – I mean, even here in Texas, the weather here is yeah. so hot. Uh, these just tend to be very, uh, you know uh, – a cool, you know, it's it's just, just really smokeable nice. at any time. Yeah, I right? agree. Yeah, I can so see now that. I'm like, oh my god, right? And then I'm like, Brian, well, what, who, who, how much is it? Because I, I I didn't know the price. Yeah, like right? how many you got? Like I'm in now. I'm like, how much is this? He's like, dude, they're like seven bucks. I'm like, are you yes. serious right now? So I bought a box. I'm like, oh my god, and I had some more. I never had the plug. You waited that long though. to give me one. Well, I, I don't even think I gave you one. I just, I don't know. We just, it's, it's we blur. just missed on that one for whatever reason. I, I, my son is about to be one, and if you take the nine months that it takes to have him be produced, like the the the, the term of pregnancy, this yes. whole two years have been a freaking blur, man. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I I'm agree. Like, I'm I like, agree. I'm like, yeah. like, like I literally, uh, all kidding aside, I called my mom and wished her. A happy birthday for my grandmother on my grandfather's birthday. Now they're only two. They're only two day, uh, eight days apart. You know what I mean? But like, I literally like, I'm just all freaking like discombobulated. We're a high performance team yeah, here. Yeah. Because things go a mile a minute. <laughs> yeah, and like, this yeah, one we pl- just like we just like missed on too. Like sometimes yeah, Joe no. and I just miss each other on cigars, and we don't. We and I bought a box, and I was like, holy shit! Yeah, awesome. they are awesome. They are super now, awesome. The other cigar that. We did connect on, I think, when you got them. This came from our sponsor, J.C. Newman. Yes. Um, and Amazing. I, dude, <laughs> I, and I'm a space cadet, man, and it took me a while to put all the pieces together. So this is the Quest of Ray Centro Fino Pyramid Number no. 9 Sun Grown. Uh, beautiful, beautiful presentation, by the way. Let me move this oh, yeah. little description about them. Uh, but beautiful presentation uh, in the box. They come in boxes of 10. And Joe gave me one recently. Yeah. And I smoked it. I'm like, again, like light bulb went off. I'm like, holy shit, the past two years have been a blur, but you, we've given each other a lot of cigars. And I'm like, all the ones you gave me, Joe, I'm like, this one's friggin' awesome. <laughs> like, and then 
I was asking a couple of local retailers. I'm like, what's the deal? Like, you guys sell these like in in the store and stuff? Nope. <laughs> and and Dave Monroe was like, oh. dude, we had those a long time ago. We closed them out. They weren't big sellers in our shop. And I'm like, right. light bulb went off. I'm like, dude, I bought those. I bought all your the entire rest of your stock because Joyles, these yep. came at one time a long time ago, in some kind of like retail packaging display where there was like 10 of each wrapper. There was like a Maduro. There, I drew, you're not in your head, right? You've seen these before, right? There was like a Maduro. Yeah. There was a, uh, the Sun Grown. There was a Connecticut. There was and some other wrapper that I don't remember what it was. Uh, and I, I can't, you could, I didn't do the research. I apologize. But there was a bunch of different wrappers, right? And these were super old. These were more than 10 years old. And they were closing them out. Like, dude, we're not selling them. I'm like, I'll take them all. They were like four, you know, three, four bucks a stick. I'm like, just give me the whole lot. Like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, I'll take a chance. And I smoked through all of them. And Stogie Santa smoked a bunch too. And we compared notes uh, at the end of our, you know, kind of trial smoking experience. And I'm like, dude, sun grown. He's like, yes, sun grown. Like, yeah. the, the rest of them are just like, okay. Like, they were good and all. They weren't bad. They were good. But the sun grown right. stood out. So Joe gives me a fresh one. I'm like, this is better than the aged ones because the aged ones were almost like aged out. So I bought I bought two more boxes of ten because I just I love smoking them, and that's the Quest Array Central Fino Sun Grown. Oh yeah! I tell you what, go go see. I, it's a great cigar. They're not. Over, what are these for a box of ten? A uh, uh, box of ten is fifty-seven Fif- bucks. Fifty. Yeah, just, seven, just, yeah. like, again, it's yeah. it's like the eight five eight, right? Yeah. Like they're around that that five six dollar price point. Um and. Like, hallelujah, man. I'm like, this is great. Yeah. This, find another cigar. That's my – you can smoke those first thing. To your point, Drew, versatility plays into my scores big time. It does. This one for me is uh, not quite Chuck Norris. It's somewhere between a box and a Chuck Norris kind of – it's it, – it, that yeah. rating for me would be like a two box because they're boxes of 10, right? Like I bought two boxes. That would be my right. rating. Like double box 10 uh, would be my rating for these. Not quite Chuck Norris, but – to your point earlier, Drew, which you're alluding to, is that versatility, right? I can smoke these exactly. first thing in the morning on my way into work, even before I eat breakfast if I wanted to, or I can smoke them later in the day, and they're awesome. They're versatile like that. So, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I when I when when Jason Newman had sent those to to me, I was like, oh, you know, I've had these before. Yeah, it's, a, it's been around for a long yeah, time. Yeah, it's been around yeah. for a while. I was like, I had these before. I kind of let it sit for you know me with patience, two days, right? <laughs> <laughs> they just came and shipped 48 hours. Talking 48 away. hours, I'm, I'm, I'm on it, right? And then so I was like, <laughs> and I was like, again, I was like, holy cow, this is amazing. You know what I mean? And then I was like, I bet this tastes good with the Bloody Mary. So I went next oh, door, yeah. got a Bloody Mary, and they taste phenomenal with the Bloody Mary. But we drink a lot of Bloody Marys. But they're also mm-hmm. very versatile cigars. For sure. And they don't break the bank. Like, you know what I mean? And and that's like a double score, right? If you can find is. a cigar. Because, you know, we can be here on Story Geeks and, and some companies ship us stuff. Like you had mentioned offline about the Cohibas that, that you're about to get, right? Those mm-hmm. are $90 sticks. General sent us to the, the them to us. And we had them. Okay, sure. Okay, cool. But it's like, you know, um, every once in a while when we get sticks that come in, which which frequently come in and 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 they kind of stop us in our tracks and 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 to me any type of cigar that can stop me in my tracks and make me pay attention to the cigar as opposed to work then I'm like okay what kind of it, it doesn't something? have to cost 150 bucks a cigar no right? no that's no, the exactly point, right <laughs> no, <laughs> talk <laughs> about extreme ends of the spectrum right we talked about five six dollar cigars multiple ones yep the EP Carrillo New Wave Reserve of Toro the yeah. uh, Quest Rays uh, Sun Grown. Um, what was it? in the eight five eight, 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 eight right? Yep. And then you, you get up in the hundred fifty dollar cigar, right? Like that's nah, I mean that's a treat and that's that's kind of cool and all, but you don't have to spend that, right? Yeah. And, and it, I, aging it plays a factor too. I know yep. Joe doesn't have patience. I don't for aging. I just don't. I wish I did. But the five six dollar smokes, I you know I mean they may get a little better with age, but you don't have to let them age. That's the point. Like I think you got to have stuff in your rotation, right? That if right. you're a regular smoker like we are, right, Drew, you smoke six days. I smoke five days a week, largely in the weekends with my yep. family. I don't have the opportunity to have a cigar. If I do, I might have one in the car, running some errands, or you know, if we're having a party out on the deck kind of thing, right? But yes. uh, most of the time, I'm smoking here in the office, right? And so you, you can't smoke 50 to $150 cigars 
you know, a couple a day in the office. That's just, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, unless unless you're really rich, right? There's a level of rich where you could do that, right? But sure, uh, I, I I don't think they're necessarily that much better, right? I like finding those ones at that price point that are smokable that you give to people and they're like, this is great. And you're like, yeah, dude, that's like the one of the least expensive cigars in my humidor, right? Yeah. Right. In reference to this cigar, kicks in towards the end. It does. It really, it really kicks in towards the end. Even if you don't retro hail, mm-hmm. like okay, it, it's it's a super, good, it's a good cigar. Definitely, yeah, most I, definitely. I would rate this one like I mean, I really don't want to say box worthy because they'd be going on like a unicorn hunt. You know what I mean? But if you could, if you I could, agree. it's I don't know. I mean, if I had a box of these, I'd be pretty happy. I mean, yeah. I've got the sample box of these. Yeah, uh, they do sell them in boxes of twenty for a particular size. They're like four to five hundred dollars a box. I take my four or five hundred dollars recently every maybe every quarter or so when do I order cigars, Joe? Now like it you know, to stock the humidor with regular smokes every quarter I might spend that four or five hundred dollars and I get, you know, like those three bundles and other box. I bought these Gilberto Olivas and the online site I ordered them from sent me ten Oliva O like Toros or something even and like the Oliva O is a pretty good cigar. I will tell you, like it is. Yeah. It's a decent cigar. It's not out of this world. It's, you know, it's, it's a five or somewhere between five and box worthy. But, right. it, you know, it's great. Like, while I'm working, if I know I'm going to be out and about, not really paying full attention, I light up the Oliva O, and it's good, right? And they sent those to me for free with the Gilberto Oliva, right? So, like, you got to do that. And then I like to seek out some of the special ones, too, largely for the show. But, you know, have your special cigars as well. Yeah. I think that's the strategy we've kind of coached our listeners to get to. It's, it's been... It's been a crazy year for sure. It's, <laughs> say the least. It's like it's just like okay, where are my story geeks? Got it. I'm in. I'm in. Let's do it. Next you know. year I'm going to Vegas with you guys. <laughs> you gotta come out, dude. dude. I, I tell you what. Besides God. the cigar lounge, let's explain the setup you had when you did the security. Like, yeah, well, so it, <laughs> it was interesting. So we we go to we've been to Vegas. So I've been going to Vegas for almost 20 years or so, right, for various security conferences. I mean, one year I was out there like three times, right, because, like, different conferences want to attract people to go, so they have them in Vegas, right? And so I've been there a lot. Um, but this year was cool because we set up a suite. And for our security podcasts, we were doing double interviews. So we had two interview tracks. So I was doing, <clears throat> like, 10 hours of interview, 12 hours of interviews a day. Matt, our CEO, was doing the same thing and we just split the suite in the middle and it was much cheaper to do that i mean ipcpr and these other conferences are all the same right when you go to the conference and you want to rent space it's expensive right to have presence in ipcpr to have presence at any kind of conference regardless of what industry you're in the prices are up there so like we did some basic math if we go to the conference and we want to rent a room to do interviews in from the conference be on the conference floor in the middle of the show floor it's like 10, 20 grand for the two days. And we're like, well, a suite's eight, nine thousand dollars a night, whatever it is. We're like, can we just do that? Now the suite we got wasn't a smoking suite. Our Stoic Geeks listeners will appreciate this very much. <laughs> and I said to our CEO, who <laughs> controls the budget now, right? Like Matt's the CEO, I'm the CTO. I do the technology side of things. I do a lot of the content. I mean, Matt does too, but like, my responsibility is technology and content. Matt's largely like running the business along with Sam. And so during the meeting, I'm like, so like can, we're going to smoke in the suite. And they're like, they did some research. They're like, well, the smoking fee is like $1,000. And Matt's like, yeah, we're paying that. Like I didn't even have to ask. And Matt's like, there's no way we're spending two days in the suite doing interviews. 12-hour interviews. 12 hour interviews if we can't have a cigar. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I know I, we hired the right CEO because he was like, no, we're paying the smoking fee. So we get into the suite. Funny part, funny story for our Stogie Geeks listeners as well. We don't have any ashtrays because it's not a smoke. Aww, yeah. You're not supposed to smoke in the suite, <laughs> so they don't give you ashtrays. So we're like, those soap dishes look like ashtrays. And then they had the larger <laughs> tray that like held all your, like your shampoos and your Q-tips and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I like yeah. clear all the crap off of that. And I take the big thing, and so we're using all the soap dishes. Uh, there was one that had soap in it. I didn't use that one. The ones that like, it was two bathrooms with two sinks each. So I took all the soap dishes that hadn't been used and those were our ashtrays and we cranked the AC and the fans. I set every, 
There was four thermostats in the room. Yep. So here's a tip. I set every single thermostat in the room to make it as cold as possible because it's Vegas. It's hot. It's over 100 degrees outside, right? Oh, yeah. I set every single thermostat <laughs> so that the fans run continuously, right? No, no automatic, like whether you're cooling or not, I want that fan to run in the HVAC system so it's doing its best to pull that. Because you can't open the window. You can't open a window, especially in Vegas after the shooting. Like, you're not, opening, oh, yeah. a, you're not opening a window. Even before that, like, you're not opening a window, right? Uh, so that HVAC system was all four thermostat, right? They're pulling the, as much smoke out as possible. And so the suite in the middle is where we did our recording because it was like an open room in the middle that we split. And then on either side of that, there was a bedroom. So there's a bedroom and a bathroom. Now, there was right. no fan in the bathroom because I would have flipped those on. Yeah, there was too. no fan. Yeah, yeah, I would have yeah. flipped those fans on, <laughs> exhaust fans, to, to pull the smoke out. There was no fan. So I had, like, basically we had our own, like, green room, right? Like, that was my in-between right. interviews. I'd go in there and have a cigar. For a lot of our mini interviews, I wouldn't necessarily smoke on camera for those because I didn't want it to get too smoky right. during those interviews. But in the green room, Joe and I shared the green room, and we were in there working in between interviews, and we had cigars all day long. And at the so end, what we got, we paid. So what we got to do is, I'm sorry. Yeah. So what we got to do next year is get you guys set up with Rabbit Air. So Rabbit Air. I mean, we we yes, I've heard of them here. before. Yes. Oh my gosh. So at IPCPR, and when Nomi went over there, he said that they had the booth and uh, Rabbit Air had a booth and they filled it with smoke, you know, some cigar smoke. And when you went in there, I mean, the Rabbit Air system just cleaned it out very well. So. Uh, we've been actually selling them here. We became a distributor for them. Nice. And and so for that, I mean, I got I got one at home, and uh, uh, of course my wife, she has a very, very good sense of smell. So she's oh, like, yeah. "You've been testing that rabbit ear, haven't you?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> but here in our cigar lounge, we we put one up on our wall, and man, I can't tell you, it's it's done a a big difference for us when we have 18, 20, up to twenty two smokers in here at one time, and this is just one unit. And it's just really worked its, its, now what, its job. What's that cost per square foot? We ordered some on Amazon on sale. They uh -huh. do like a thousand square feet. And it helps yeah. with the dust and it does help with the smoke. It's not a smoke eater per se, but sure. it does help. And it was like we got one on sale. Like normally it's like five hundred for dollars for like five hundred to a thousand square feet, right? Um, yes. we got that on sale for like three sixty nine or whatever. Uh, uh -huh. So I bought one. I bought a smaller one for uh, for at home, just really to improve the air quality and smells. Sure. And we have dogs, right? It takes us. It has an ionizer in it. Do the rabbit ears it have does. an ionizer in it? Right. That's important. Yes, very important. Uh, yeah, for us, it's it's been one of those uh, products that uh, a few of our clients have bought. Actually, a lot of them uh, have bought them, and they they came back with rave reviews. And uh, but it it works. It works pretty well. And, and what what's it called? A, a rabbit, like the animal air? Rabbit air? or Yeah, rabbit air. Uh-huh. And actually, uh, on the website, you'll see my one of my photos uh, with my dog next to it because my wife's like, I don't smell the dog in the house anymore. I'm like, yeah, I know. That rabbit yeah, air is it does, doing its yeah. job. Yeah, they, they do work well. Maybe we need to get one of those and travel. <laughs> That's all, you know, but it's so funny, now, though. Now, now it'll be like, okay, we got the Comrex. That was called Comrex. We got the we Comrex. Gear, yeah, yeah. We, got, we got the cameras. We got, everybody got this rabbit thing. thing. <laughs> we ship it. <laughs> Our shipping costs are ridiculous because we have to ship to the conference. Plus, we, we do T-shirts and stickers and swag and all that for the booth. Yes. So it's, it gets expensive. We'll be. But I tell you what, though, when I <laughs> when I traded my truck in, right, had cloth seats and I smoked cigars in it. And yes. I was nervous trading in. I'm like. They're going to devalue it. And I happen to know the guy that, that ran the dealership. Uh, he's a good friend of ours. And he's like, I'll let you in on like a little secret. He's like, dude, we drop an ionizer in there. And those are the commercial ones where you can't be, uh, people can't be in the same confined space. Because it actually pulls all the oxygen out and like does, I don't know the physics behind it, but it like does something with the molecules, right, to pull the smells out. Yes. You can't be in there when it's running. Now these other units will have the ionizer in it, but you can be in there with it. But the dealerships, when you trade a car in, they drop one of those in. I would imagine they let it run overnight. They're like a thousand, I looked them up on Amazon, like a thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. They drop it in yeah. and it pulls all the smells out. All the hotel rooms are doing, this is speculation on my part, when you pay that fee, that fee yeah. is because they have to drop one of those units in the room to pull out yeah. all the smells in the room and they can't, 
like rent uh, they can't uh, assign that room to someone else until that's done so you're basically paying for the ionizer plus any time that goes by where they may have a day or time you know late check-in that someone yep. can't use that room until it's done so that's yeah. a, a dirty little secret i don't know if you <laughs> we talked about previous shows renting a car <laughs> If you had one, you know, someone that had one of those units, you could drop it in that unit. Literally, you could smoke in that car all week, drop one of those units in, and it would pull all the smells out. That's that's pretty wild. Yeah, that was a wild week in Vegas, I must say. It was. I'm, I'm going next year. You need to come out with us, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can learn about computers, man. It's a fascinating industry, man. That's a uh, fast-paced Phenomenal industry. What were the cigars? Even, um, uh, on a closing note, Aaron brought uh, Romeo and Julietta's Cubans. Cubans from from Ireland. Yeah, they were like a Lonsdale kind of size. Yep, uh, they were awesome. Yeah, and I we, he he gave them to all of us. Um, uh, Aaron used yeah Aaron used to be uh, he did like a fellowship basically with us, and he lives out in the UK. Bought a mm -hmm. box of those Romeo and, and Julietta's brought them and was like you know they're they're fair game so i grabbed a handful of them you know four or five of them before we left i smoked ones while we we're out there what an awesome morning smoke dude yeah. it is like i've smoked uh most of them on my way into they're awesome awesome sticks yeah. they were good yeah that was a good trip we we're watching the, the raider stadium being built as we were working yeah, right outside the room and uh smoking romeo and julietta cumin so i mean there you have it. That's how you smoke in a hotel room, and you can't go wrong. But Drew, man, soap dishes for ashtrays. And so, yeah. Drew, you <clears> come <throat> out. It's a blast. It's. it's a lot do of we fun. do any cybersecurity stuff in Texas or no? Um, there is a con there's a couple of conferences out there. There's a, a B sides out there that's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. We'll I mean, be in Atlanta, which is kind of close, but yeah, yeah, we'll get out to yeah. Texas. Yeah, super cool. Super cool. Awesome. Well, you want to round out the show? Yeah, man. Paul, thanks Cheers. for joining us. Good to be back. Uh, thanks for joining us, Drew. Jose Blanco told me I need to come back, so yeah. I'm, I'm just now getting around to it, Jose. So cheers to you, my friend. Thank you for the inspiration. And uh, I finally, like I said, got some of my development to a place where I had a yeah. little more time. It's been a, it's been uh, uh, the, the Stoic Geeks listeners are gonna. Uh, I can only imagine the. Paul, look at this episode. Paul's a lot of fun. On it. It's a lot Paul's of fun. On it. Yeah. Paul's on it, you know, uh, <laughs> super cool. Drew, you brought Paul back to the microphone. I've been trying for a year. You've won up to me yet again on another <clears> show. <throat> Drew, great I, doing a show with you, my friends. <laughs> Everybody's been asking, "Where's Paul? Where's he?" Yeah. <laughs> is, 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 dude, I have like, been I've been answering that question for two years. You know, <laughs> you know. Uh, by the way, uh, I've done some quick research. Your last show mm. you were on. Was the tequila episode? Oh God! Oh wow! That <laughs> I was drunk. <laughs> you know, drunk. That's that when Aaron, that was Aaron's last day. Yeah, that was a four and a half hour show. And just so you know, we're at three hours and eleven minutes. That's well. You so know. Nice. Do you want to keep on talking? Or no, let's go. Yeah, up? let's wrap this we're shit up. I gotta go home. Stoic Geeks, listeners, thank you for listening, Drew. Thank you very much. Take care. Stay cool out there in Texas. Stoic Geeks, oh, yeah. listeners. Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. Email me. Tag us on any photos. It was a pleasure being here, and we'll see you next time.